Hi, another film that I saw with my week-long trial of Apple Plus was The Tragedy of Macbeth, the first uh, solo film by Joel Cohen, who uh, directed and adapted from the Shakespeare play, separately from his brother Ethan. Um, we all know the story. It's about the king of Scotland, who, uh, had, having previously been given a prophecy by witches that he would become king, um, acts on this prophecy, is driven by his own greed and ambition, along with that of his wife, Lady Macbeth, and uh, is ultimately defeated by uh, loopholes in the prophecy that uh, come true. We've read this at school, we all know it. Um, the film is surprisingly tight and brisk. It's an hour and 45 minutes, um, nearly an hour shorter than most versions of um, the play, or screen versions anyway, uh, with Denzel Washington uh, in the lead role, uh, Frances McDormand as Lady Macbeth, um, Brendan Gleeson as King Duncan. And I enjoyed it a great deal. I liked it very much. Uh, the film has a very stylized, um, old-fashioned, almost German expressionist aesthetic to it. It's filmed in black and white. It's in four by three. Um, so it has a this expressionist, sort of proto-David Lynchian, Robert Eggers, the director of The Lighthouse, type, um, dreamlike, claustrophobic um, aesthetic to it. And the entire film was made on sound stages. Uh, and everything is wreathed in shadows and fog. And it's fantastically atmospheric and fantastically magnetic and charismatic. Uh, it looks sensational and it deserves, I think, an Oscar nomination, if not a win, for uh, the year's best cinematography. Uh, Denzel Washington as Macbeth, I was somewhat skeptical about because I'm generally not a fan of his, but I thought this was maybe his best performance I've seen. Um, he gives the character all the depth and nuance that you need, that he is someone who is ambitious but still tentative, who is who wants to believe in the prophecy of the witches, but is nevertheless distrustful of them. And it has that mixture of levels, that, that um, those conflicting magnetic elements pushing against each other. Uh, that make the character so fascinating, and Washington expresses them beautifully. Uh, one of the best performances I've seen this year. Um, McDormand is also excellent as Lady Macbeth. Um, less of a major character in this uh, iteration of the story, but nevertheless still a very strong performance, and a lot of it, I think, more visual rather than expressed through the text. Um, it's hard really to go into because if you know the story, then you kind of know what to expect. There are a, a range of variations. The witches are played by a single actor, Catherine Hunter, uh, with the witches portrayed in the, a, a, a series of strange visionary fashions. Hunter herself uh, is a, a stage actor with a almost worryingly uh, flexible physicality, folding herself up and with and with a very uh, expressive. Um, uh, appearance and, and, and face and voice. Um, apparently she's a, a huge name on the stage and this is a really extraordinary uh, balletic um, visual performance uh, twisting and deforming her body in, in all these strange ways. Um, and the film is filled with striking visuals, uh, the appearances of the witches themselves, the, um, the visual metaphor of crows all the way through. Um, and it's and the, just the way the, the framing is used, the editing is is very sharp and crisp, and the music is beautifully doom laden and again very enclosing, very atmospheric, very claustrophobic. So it's a very strong version of the story. I think possibly one of the best versions I've seen. Certainly for cinema, it might, it might, it might well be the best. Um, and I would recommend it very highly. It's not easy going. The story of Macbeth is tough material and not not as lightweight as some of his cheeriest plays. But um, as a Shakespeare movie goes, this is one of the best I've seen in a very long time, and I would recommend it very much.